Would you please uh, join me for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, order to be justice for all. All righty. Good evening, everyone. Uh, you are either sitting in person or tuning in virtually to the uh, November 9th meeting of the Town of Canandaigua Planning Board. Thank you for joining us. Uh, I see a lot of familiar faces, so I'm going to forego the introductions. Uh, I think, if, if, is there someone that doesn't know someone here? Okay, we're, we're, all, we're friends all among here. friends, right? Okay, so uh, with that being taken care of, I just want to point out we have two exits to my left and right should an emergency occur and you have to leave the room. Please use one of those exits. Uh, first thing I want to do is uh, officially is do the privilege of the floor, which is a point in our agenda where we uh, ask anyone in the audience who would like to address the board regarding an issue that's uh, not on the agenda. Uh, now would be the time to come to the podium and uh, uh, ask your question or make your statement. Okay, hearing none. As far as any attestments required this evening for public hearings, we have no public hearings. So there were no, uh, no publications or legal notices in the Daily Messenger uh, for this meeting. So uh, that was one less thing we had. Save some money. Yeah. All right, first item on the agenda uh, is uh, Marks Engineering, Chair Brendan Marks, representing Angelo. I haven't thought you said your name in a while. Lee Chardello. Lee Chardello. <laughs> I got in a routine there where you're here every week, every yeah, month. Every week. Hey. <laughs> Angel is the owner of property at 3535 State Route 364. Uh, he has come this evening for an extension request of his preliminary overall approval for his subdivision uh, for uh, effectively the Sunset Ridge subdivision. Uh, his, his current application or his current approval expires uh, next month on the 11th. And uh, uh, in Angelo, Mr. Angelo and Sal have submitted a uh, request for an extension, and we have before us tonight a 90-day uh, extension resolution. And if you could just bring us up to date where you stand, I know uh, it's been a couple six months since. Yes, yeah, it's been a while. Uh, we yeah. have, well, first of all, it's good to see you all. Uh, it's been a while. So, um, so when the conditional preliminary conditional preliminary approval was granted back in June, there was a lot of conditions. I think over twenty. Um, we can make good progress. Diligently, you know, working to resolve all those. I think we have two or three outstanding items. Um, and we had initially talked about maybe asking to modify it, but I spoke with Chris Nadler, and he kind of reassured me that some of those conditions weren't as uh, stringent as we initially thought. I'm really just worried about getting caught up waiting for responses from other state agencies, attorney general's office, et cetera. Um, but uh, we are very close um, working with uh, Woods Ovia Gilman on doing the uh, homeowners association. Um, they're gonna be taking care of filing that. Um, I, was supposed to have something at the beginning, beginning of this week to give to you guys regarding that, but um, there's been a delay. Um, so we're hoping to get that over to uh, Mr. Naylor to review um, as early as next week. Um, but we are you know, very close. Uh, I think we're probably about 90% of the way there. Um, so uh, I think we may be able to get everything before the December 11th, but uh, we just wanted to you know, put the extension in now to be proactive. And, you know, as we push in towards the holiday season, you know, people start taking a little bit longer to respond and whatnot. So, um, so we feel like the 90 days would be enough to. Uh, so this is for the preliminary overall. Uh, yes. And I guess the procedure would be uh, once the conditions are met and they've been confirmed by staff and our engineering firm, uh, the plans get signed. Okay. 
then I guess you could pursue a final approval of one of the sections. <coughs> sections one and two. Section you're thinking about, okay. We want to hold you to a particular section. Uh, yeah, that's what we're planning on right now. Okay. So then uh, that would be the next thing this board would see would be the final plan for section. So, uh, board, we have in front of us uh, a request. Uh, for an extension of 90 days to March 16th, 2023. Sal said he feels it to be accomplished in a much shorter period of time in terms of meeting the condition. So uh, if uh, someone will make a motion regarding granting the extension. I will move that we grant the extension um, for CPN 22012, extending the new expiration date to March 16th, 2023. If I may, I apologize. My end date, the expiration is off from that that's before you tonight. So it's really December 11, 22 is when the project expires. Mm -hmm. That would mean the expiration date of the 90 day extension would be March 11. March 11 versus the 16th. Correct. Sorry about that. With, with the previously approved conditions. Correct. <laughs> okay, I have a motion to have a second. A second. Okay, motion to second. Further discussion? Why do we have the time limitations? I think it's state law. What kind of time? 180 days. So the 180 day time period is typically what Canandaigua has used That's in the past. Um, and that gets us halfway through the year. And then we offer the ability to do the 90 day extension, which isn't found in town law that that ability is provided. That gets you to the one year standpoint. Some communities offer up longer than that, but we go to that one year time frame. And anything that can't make it automatically comes back in a new application. In some instances, we already saw that with the Metro's project. But what, is the, what is the intended purpose of a six month timeline? The 180 days, because I, I don't know specifically why that day, other than to get you have to hang out there. That's so that, right. Yeah. And then after six months of nothing's been moving forward or progressing with the conditions, then that gives us or the board the ability to extend it another. 90 days again with written request reasons supporting why that is and then another 90 day on top of that if the need arises as to why the 180 days i think it was just to accommodate the, the back end i've seen I, some I, communities, I thought it was stable but you're just saying it's our local some order. communities have extended beyond 90 some days are, you know way over. Um, the, the initial mm -hmm. or they might not but put our initial not, approval of 180 so. right some communities won't even put a time frame as to when the plan expires. That's what I was asking is why we care. I think it's just because we have that one year time window where something happens and the plans don't ever get signed. Do you really want to go another year or two years before you see it? And then when you see it, what codes, what building codes, what fire codes, what town codes have changed over that three year period? Is it still the same project that you have? No, no, I understand the one year. I was just wondering if there was a reason that we had the six month. Does it, is that to help? To say, hey, you're halfway through? I think it's just to get back to you guys with information as to why it's being delayed. Should we be concerned? Uh, this isn't the first timeline that's been missed on this project. Should we be concerned about that? I don't know what other deadline you're referring to. I was turned down at the town board level for the application timing that happened at that right. time. It was just for the timing for our petition to rezone the property. As you know, we faced a large organized uh, effort against the project, which sure. caused some delay. Uh, but that was a completely different project. I don't think I'm speaking out of turn to say that we pretty much uh, hit all our deadlines with this uh, for this project. Um, and we've also been making a lot of effort, you know, progress too. It's not like we're uh, we hit two out of twenty three or whatever. You know, we. We're like 90% of the way there. Um, there's been a lot of coordination with, uh, you know, Town of Hopewell and other, you know, agencies too that have just kind of been uh, bogged down and taken a while. Um, so. Yeah, and say I'll just speaking. This is Brendan Marks here, right? Um, you know, we submitted to the Department of Health and the the County Sewer Department, which, uh, if anyone's dealt with the Department of Health before, it usually takes them about six months to even get back to you on it. Uh, we have not even heard from the health department on this yet, um, but I imagine we're floating to the top of their pile, and I'll hear from them shortly. 
I, I just to add a little bit of background too, I know that as part of this project, the county sewer in joint with other communities, Canandaigua, Gorham, Hopewell, uh, we're doing a study, a uh, sewer study for capacity reasons, which could have changed the size of the sewer that's being extended as part of this project. Uh, they didn't want to run into a problem later on as part of that process that would not allow future connections if the time ar if it arises during review purposes. So they thought they would do a study. Now, I know that study took a little bit longer than anticipated. I, I think it ended probably August, September. I can't speak for the county, but I know that's about the time period that we had heard it had finished. Um, so I know that that was one element that played a role in, in some of the delay, whether it was all of the reasons I can't speak to that, but I know that was one element. Yeah, and um, another thing we've been working on is we've been dealing with the Army Corps of Engineers. So we, that's, that is also, you know, dealing with the, the uh, federal government is, is a slow process also. Okay. Okay, uh, I have a motion and a second to grant the extension. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Thanks, Aye. Thanks so much, guys. Okay. Have a good night. See you shortly, though. Yeah. I'll be able to pronounce your name. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, no. All right. All righty. Moving on the agenda, uh, we're looking at the Mahar Engineering, care of Anthony Tara, project engineer of an address in Rochester, representing Brian and Angie Jocelyn, owning property, uh, who live in Columbus, Ohio, but they own property on uh, 3611 County Route 16, requesting a single state site plan approval for a teardown and rebuild of a single family home. Uh, with a graded extension of an existing driveway, approximately square footage of the service, 2,750 square feet. This is a continuation from back, uh, well, September 20th. Yeah. yeah, it was right back. No, so, uh, no, I think it was fourth. May. Anthony, if you'd like to go to the podium. Yeah, we'll be first. Or yeah. Back in May. Yeah. But we have just. I think we, we sent you back to the drawing boards uh, primarily regarding issues that we had, the PCD had, the county planning board had, all related to uh, landscaping and uh, showing guideline uh, issues and making sure that uh, we felt that uh, the project met the shoreline guidelines. And uh, you want to tell us uh, what you've done to try to uh, take care of those issues. Yes, yeah, so I actually have a couple sets of materials I can just, if you don't mind, hand over to you. Sure. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> so, <clears throat> uh, good evening, everyone. Can you hear me just fine? Yep. Yeah. All right. I'm going to reintroduce yourself and uh, for the record. Yes. Uh, my name is Tony Tintero. I'm the project engineer with Mahar Engineering for Joslin Site Plan Project on County Road 16, seeking approval tonight. Previously, we presented the project at the September 27th planning board meeting. Approval for a rear lake setback for the proposed home was received during the September 20th planning board meeting. Regarding comments that were received for the project, comments were received from Canandaigua Lake County Sewer District's Don Haven, so it's been satisfied. Comments were also received from Ontario County Department of Public Works, Paul Pondo. Uh, those were also satisfied. Uh, comments from Lance, uh, we responded to October 14th. Uh, Lance, would you be able to elaborate as to uh, what all of our comments have been addressed as well? Yes, uh, I'd like to take some time to discuss the project as it relates to the shoreline development guidelines. Uh, from the last meeting, uh, certainly the main concern. Kim, um, I had shared a video of some drone footage taken along the shoreline for our project. Are you able to bring that up? If not, I did bring a laptop that I could use to share. I, that. I, I think it kind of might be a shorter one in the video, but I, I think we all we saw the still shots. Well, it was the video is on the M drive. Yeah. The M drive. Yeah, you have an hour on that one. If, if you want, to, if you can show it without too much. 
It's really just the transformation. Like we did see in the still shots where you you know, either pull an interval, depending on which order you're watching, uh, as far as the drone from the lake. So we saw that. Now, the, is the video just? The video is just a cleaner look, focusing on neighboring properties head on, okay. coming across the base of I don't want to spend a lot of time, but if we can pull it up fine. If not, I think we have enough information as to what the house looks like. There, it is. there we go. Okay, so this is starting from the south, Butler Road, working north, that white house, there with the dock, that's the part of the site. How does the uh, height of the roof line match with the neighboring homes? The height of the roof line match with the neighboring homes? Yeah, um, in comparison. So is it higher? Is it, or using the telephone line, something along those lines? It's lower, and what's ultimately proposed is maxing out the 25-foot uh, max building length um, for RLD. Zoning district based off of Canada with guidelines. Uh, the only one to the zoning board for rear, like setback approval. So, uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much all we wanted to show with the video. Um, in terms of how the proposed home is in relation to the overhead lines, this detail is provided on our drawing. So, you can see the red line there showing an offset from the average grade taken around the perimeter. Um, Ultimately, we're bringing up uh, the surrounding wall on the roof up where there's the access just before that 25 foot. Um, on the roadside, you can see how the overhead wires are uh, in relation to the home as well. Oh, I, I actually misread that when I looked at it in the electronic drawing. I didn't realize that that was, that was power line. So the, the back, the wall at the top of the wall is 25 feet, right? <clears throat> it's from the mean average, mean average rate. It's taken around the perimeter of the structure. So with respect to the video that was shown, um, as you can see, the property uh, surrounding our lot, uh, those neighboring properties and our lot itself, has a great lack of vegetative screen from the lakeside building facades, most likely as a result of the hardship of the limited yard space. Uh, Looking two houses south, north of our property, there's really not a whole lot of variation in terms of the depth of each property. And therefore, really the separation distance between the back side of the structure and the seawalls. So at that point, that limited yard space restricts the kind of vegetation that can be established on site without damaging the brick walls or house foundations. And talking with uh, Brian, who is uh, not joined on the Zoom tonight, uh, it's on a plane trip out of state. Uh, wanted to talk a little bit about the history of the lot. Uh, specifically, this home uh, has been maintained by the same family for generations now. Uh, the property holds a lot of sentimental value as a childhood home for our client. Brian, mm -hmm. whose grand grandparents maintain the property. Ultimately, Brian wants to keep the house as is, or much like what his grandparents had, and why the color, color of the home that's being proposed is essentially matching the white tones that currently exist. Um, there was a rendering that I had shared uh, as well. I believe everybody saw. Um, it's really only uh, the variation with the overhang of the structure where some clapboard siding with a darker tone, say beige, uh, it's currently proposed. Ultimately, the main color of all of the facades is proposed and stucco as a sort of off white, uh, but again, maintaining the layer tones that uh, currently exist. Again, I think the site is very important to our client. Uh, this, even also, this even reflects in the house plans as the interior layout is meant to reflect the history of the home. With respect to the yard space, Brian names a turn with available yard space he has into a sort of oasis, as he describes it. Previously, his grandmother lined the existing concrete break wall with potted plants, which is exactly what Brian intends to do. Uh, he'd like to have window gardens placed at the windows on the lake side of the house to better screen the property from the lake. Uh, ultimately, this isn't represented in the rendering to the shown. Um, so I have a printout that I had provided to the shown, sort of generic representation of what those 
Mm -hmm. In addition to potted plants along the brick wall, trying to stress that he would like to position additional potted plants um, around even the front of the roof and also uh, on the stairs coming down accessing the kitchen. Previously, our landscaping plan is sort of generic representation of shrubs and dwarf trees. In actuality, we'd like to propose the placement of only the shrubs adjacent to the stairs, just north and south of those stairs. Originally on site, a large willow tree existed but had to be removed due to the root damage that had taken place over time to the existing break wall. On our plans, we show that break wall as a four, foot, four to five foot width. Um, in reality, it's not that sturdy. That cap was poured in the 80s. Um, the majority of the seawall is a much thinner shell underneath, um, which having failed during that time period in the 80s is the reason why that concrete cap was poured. So perhaps in the future, um, that brick wall will be improved, say, with a, a sheet piling wall immediately in front of it, a uh, much sturdier approach that would allow the removal of that concrete cap increasing green space and the potential for more vegetation on the lot. That being said, if dwarf trees were to be placed on site now, the removal five years down the road would be likely. And this would pose a logistical challenge in terms of how the trees would be removed from the site at that time. As well, with respect to screening, as limited as it would be for a dwarf tree if there are the shrubs behind it, specifically those shown north and south of the stairs in the rendering. And those trees would really just be provided for the sake of screening and not to establish a long-term vegetative solution if they had to say, recycled every five years removed, replanted, just for the sake of screening the lower elevation of the home, uh, where again, based off the neighboring properties and what you have, you have uh, none whatsoever. Did uh, reach out to several local botanists and nurseries. Uh, some examples include Ted Collins Landscaping, Garden Center, Made Flowers, and Bristols, with respect to what the recommendations would be for the limited space adjacent to the lake. And uh, I provided copies of board regarding some of the recommended plantings that would be used adjacent to the stairs. So I'd like to point out um, in our updated shoreline development guidelines letter, we listed Burn the Bush as a potential option, but in actuality, that's a regulated invasive species in New York State. Um, and as such, it would not be provided. Some final remarks I would like to stress to the board. Uh, originally, our client had looked to simply renovate the existing home on site. In talking with contractors, none of them were willing to fix the inside of the existing home, given concerns with how it may have been constructed previously, specifically concerns with its structural stability. Regarding the shoreline development guidelines themselves, it's my opinion uh, that the lack of quantitative requirements makes discerning what the planning board wants difficult. Um, in reality, the way they read it is qualitative and therefore somewhat subjective in how they can be enforced. If there were quantitative requirements, um, I could certainly lead to projects where only minimum requirements are being met for shoreline development guidelines. But in the case of our client, uh, as I described, he's shown a willingness to explore options and maximize the potential of a lot through functional plantings and potted plantings that make sense on site. Um, I'd like to stress also that the location of those potted plantings would be uh, in the vicinity where lot coverage is currently being counted. So that really there's no increased law coverage. Mm -hmm. At this time, I'd like to turn that discussion over to the board for any questions or concerns we have. Okay, well, you should certainly give us a detailed description, Anthony, uh, as to what you propose. I guess my concern is making sure that what you said is going to get done is on a plan somehow memorialized into because. Right now, we have not seen anything more than this, and your, like just, you said, your generic uh, landscape plan that you have. I think we need details as far as uh, uh, size and species. Uh, I don't think that was, I think we'd asked for that. I don't think we've seen that in the revised plan. 
again, I, I'm not arguing with what you're proposing, and you're certainly, I think, uh, certainly Brian has gone out of his way to consider, uh, you know, compliance with our guidelines, but just want to make sure that what you're saying and what he's proposing is on a plan so that we can make sure. It's done. Mm -hmm. So I guess if, if it's up to the board, uh, we could, I mean, I hate to set you back and, okay, bring us another plan in. If we could at least get what you're saying tonight on a plan and get that submitted uh, uh, and it would be on discretion, I guess, the chairman and our engineer to make sure that uh, those provisions of landscaping are provided. Uh, now, again, it's, it's the discretion of the board. It, if they want to see another plan, that's certainly their problem. So I guess I'll open up the board. How, how comfortable do you feel about what uh, Tony's presented tonight and uh, uh, being assured that what he said is going to be provided will be? I agree with you um, in your assessment that we should have it on a plan to be able to align, you know, what we're signing off on, what we're approving with what will be implemented. Um, it's consistent with previous projects on the Lakeshore, um, um, you know, the Lakeshore guidelines that we've reviewed. We've always had, you know, whether it be on a site plan or a landscape plan or, you know, some other visualization so that we can really assess the shoreline guidelines. <clears throat> so I would agree. I think they've met. They've answered our question and you've come back with what we requested. Satisfactory, but just putting all together. It's just not pencil. Right. right. Need to. Pencil or paper. Yeah. Right. yeah. Right. Described it, but we haven't actually seen it now. Right. You know, how, how flexible we want to be in terms of seeing it on a plan. What do, we, what do we want to do? Do we want to bring it back do it again, or do you want it into the prerogative of uh, myself and Lance to make sure that it's correct? I would choice be. I trust you. you. you I'd also <laughs> like to have Pam um, take a look at the species because she's an expert on once that comes into on the plan, just to make sure that it's not the non invasive. So. Right. And just to clarify, when you were reading the graded driveway, that disappeared, right? Yes. Okay. I should have, uh, okay. Oh, okay. I was talking about it, and I wanted to make sure that we get reintroduced. When I read it, I said, this isn't right, but I, I know I questioned it the last okay. time. No. no. So that's not part of it. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Mark, how do you feel? <clears throat> I don't have a problem. You guys doing the assessment on a cut. I'm fine with the yeah. human lands doing that. You feel that what he's proposing uh, verbally is adequate? No, I think it needs to be on a. It's, if it's no, but I mean on, the the type, the type of planning, the reasons for doing what he's going to do, and the potted plants, and the uh, proposing. Yeah, I guess the. Uh, well, I'm trusting the forsythia and the dogwood, and, and I'm trusting the intent of you and Lance to look at the final set of plans and. Make the decision of the, of sizing and things along those lines, and I agree that asking Kim to take a look at the species just to ensure that it that meets the criteria fit. Um, do I need to see the drawings? Not absolutely, because I trust that you understand what we're doing. Thank, thank you for that comments. Yeah, <laughs> the intent I hear is what I hear today. I would be okay with that. It's, it's we just spend, spend a moment maybe coming up with a condition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so I guess and we, one, we certainly want to help you. One not, question I have is, leave it up to you, did um, everything that you mentioned tonight, was that memorialized in a letter that was forwarded to the board? I heard something about a, a, a redraft of the statement of shoreline guidelines. I'm trying to recall if I saw that. Perfect. What's the um, date on it? November second, you said. Why don't we add that to the this? I think that condition can be generated around yeah. that, but also generic enough to say to meet, like we have before, to meet the satisfaction of the chairman and the town engineer. You see this? I don't remember seeing that. What what I initially put is the updated landscaping plan is to be provided to address the planning board concerns 
as detailed at the 11 9 22 plan board meeting and as described by the applicant to the satisfaction of the chairman of the design engineer. I think that should also include as reference as detailed by the applicant in a letter dated November 2nd. Okay, we're getting there. So between what you've testified to tonight, what's in this letter, and as long as we get it on the plan, I think we've got everything pretty well done. <clears throat> And subject to kind of review as well as pieces. You must have emailed us today. Who's read the generic print up for guardian and say, like, was the types of species okay. that were being compared and how they were treated? It's just the photos of like the window boxes, for instance. Um, those weren't emailed out earlier today, but I can email them. Well, if that's what you, I guess just wait until you decide what your schedule is, your landscape schedule will be, and then we can look at that. Yeah, because with the intent of using like the sit, the sorry, the deciduous shrubs, um, those are just like a few of the options considered. Um, do they grow well in pots? Some, so some do. I think these are either side of the steps, right? The Persithia and the uh, well, exactly. Oh, the, on the, two. the willows. Yeah. Yeah. The species also, I believe, the willow, for instance, uh, would be well in uh, moist soil conditions mm -hmm. as well. So just, I'm going to wait. The existing house is white, white. Yes, I mean, it's white. So yeah, so what you proposed right. is not white. So, in the latter, um, by doing so, our clients are emphasizing the historical importance of the site by maintaining the existing color. Um, but it's not the existing color. It's, it's the house it's is white. Yeah, I mean, so it's not exactly. So, this is more of a beige, two, two or three tone tan and beige, which is more appealing, obviously, for the. From the lake to so at that double point. it down a little bit. Yeah. So, so then plus it's not white. I mean, that's what because the house now is white. Yeah. So at that point, I don't know if a separate condition entirely would be. Okay. Well, I just that was your first point in the letter. So this thing house is white. This rendering showing is more of a beige. Mm -hmm. Beige at least would be overhanging, but more so off white with uh, more so off white beige with the stucco regions. So it's not this. Mm -hmm. but, it's going to be something later than this. No, no, it's, it's supposed to be. Oh, okay. okay. Well, that's what yeah, I'm right. I, I, that's where I was because okay. I bet in the house is white, white. And it's blizzard white. So this is blizzard not blizzard white. white. Okay. So clarify that it's not going to be white because in your letter it says it's going to be the existing color. Right? Mark right. 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 Okay. All right. I just want to make sure it's not going to be white. That's that to me in the this mm. looks on the screen. I think you should probably amend that. 11 to, to address mm -hmm. what you're talking about. Clarify what was yeah, clarify. testified. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. If you want to cross reference the elevation. And I, I mean, the potted plants are movable, they're not fixed. So, uh, where are you putting potted plants? So, so again, the way. Yeah, so like, for instance, on the steps, <laughs> out to the wall. So, you see, like, the doors coming down through your yard. Here, so imagine potted plants along the stairs oh, down okay. towards the shrubs. Yep. But like you said, potted them being potted plants, you the enforceability of and they're seasonal too. Them. So yeah, and, and you are talking about deciduous shrubs either side of the steps. Right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So they, they wouldn't have to be green in the winter. Which okay, that's fine. Yeah, this was a. Rendering prepared by Morbido Architects, mm -hmm. uh, architect for the project, more so to clarify the appearance of the house. I just want to make sure that what you're showing us tonight, of course, right. on the record, right. is what you're going to do. And uh, if you go out and we see something different, people get upset. So. But ultimately, at the same time, it, <clears throat> I mean, it's how like, your phrase in the condition, we have to have something before you even lands that. You are oh, yeah, no, no, certainly what you did, what you described that I was very helpful. It's much clearer. But if we can see that, as we said, on the, on the record, on the plan, that'd be good. Anybody else have anything on the landscape? How about other issues? I think 
Lance's MRB was mostly stormwater management, and you said that most of those issues have been resolved. Yeah, Lance. we had issued a letter, but it was just basically saying that a lot of our comments have been addressed. Did uh, you all? Just all. I don't know. It's been a while. He's to go. Um, I think I'll follow up with you tomorrow. We sent that maybe from an old email, like a Gmail. I mean, um, there's an orange in there at gmail.com, but we can also say so. Yeah, I don't have it all. I can resend it. Yeah, I think so. Did, yeah. I, either way, that's fine. I can make sure you get it done, but we have no comments for it. Our, all of our letter was passed in my October 14th submission. I did have a question. This is the prior presentation about the construction of vehicles because there's absolutely no room on that road. For it. So that's been addressed with the county. I, I, I apologize. I couldn't hear you very well. They've, Construction vehicles during construction because there's no place. Right. You know, your, so your as part truck. of you know, from our standpoint, no, because the county still has to issue their permit mm -hmm. on on the road and the driveway curb cut and all that process. So until they issue it, we won't know how they're going to what they're going to allow, not allow mm -hmm. in terms of construction. Yeah. Paul Paul's response basically saying that there was no further comments in the site plan indicated. As discussed, the contractor will be required to obtain a highway work permit prior to getting the work. The application process will include a review of the means and methods for construction to ensure adequate protection of the roadway, specifically the extent of excavation and shoring has never been plans. So it's part of their review and approval of those. They'll guide that aspect of the project. Okay, just looking through uh, other reviews from other people. And, uh, County Road, <laughs> County Public Works, we talked about. Obviously, they're going to have to be involved since we're so close to the road. Um, the County Planning Board, uh, their concern again was landscaping and shoreline guidelines. And uh, they did recommend denial. So we need a super majority this evening. And other than that, I think it's here my notes. Anybody else have anything? One of our previous meetings, there was a question about the rooftop kitchen uh, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and other activities that could or that would be visible from either side up there. Mm -hmm. Was that addressed, addressed to the group satisfaction? I think there were questions that we didn't answer, but I just remember I have notes here that stated it was tied to a rooftop kitchen and what was visible from that. Yeah, we talked about the picnic activities on top of the roof. Um, there is a, I think, the, is there a building uh, grill or something? Or is it just going to be a, there's going to be a, somebody had said there was a grill on the roof. It says a rooftop kitchen. And so kitchen. kitchen. We did thought it was okay. going to be higher than the wall. Right? Concern was whether or not that would be visible on the lake side or not. Okay. And we, I think we said it can't be any higher than the height like yeah, the wall. The right. I think that's what I thought. Now, I guess you put a table up there, and if you want to put an umbrella up, the umbrella is really high. And there's already a pergola. That's there. So that would probably be maximum height to give us the visual. That's definitely. There would be no um, <clears throat> permanent fixtures exceed like the next building. Yeah. Right. Um, and again, Brian stressed he liked to have potted plantings around the perimeter so I can help screen some of the activities. Mm -hmm. Oh, plants of the top. Is that railing set back from the edge of the roof where you could put potted plants between the edge of the roof and the railing on the lake side? I don't think that's the intent. From Brian, it's more so the knee wall. Yeah. Um, along the northern and southern sides of the home, so without the railing. Um, are you using? No, I'm just thinking if, if the railing was offset from the, the edge, then there'd be an area where you would put plants over the, 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 the other side of the I'm rendering of the building. Yeah, I'm, I'm over designing this thing. I'm, sorry. <laughs> All right, so I'm just thinking out loud. The roof has uh, the the roof Call me up when he builds an option. <laughs> it, I might not be safe. Either. There's, <laughs> there's currently, if you look at the right side elevation, the railing goes, there's a, that, Part of the there's a parapet that sticks out forward towards the lake on the house, yeah. and that railing goes flush to the edge of that. So it's flush to the edge, right? So that, no. 
how they do the, and this is why it's important to see it on the plans, because again, what the goal of the RLD in many ways is to reduce the overall impact of the building to turn it to a more natural look. It'll be interesting to see how they do the flower boxes and plant boxes on the face of the building with the type of design as well. So I think that's why it's important to see those things, Joe. Hey, you hang flower boxes in the room too. Yeah. Just give me the items. I will charge you. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. I think we beat this up enough. Anybody else have any other questions, concerns on the plan itself? Before we move on to the seeker. Okay, it's a type two seeker. Uh, and being it's type two, and the uh, the application is somewhat straightforward. Uh, I'll, I'll set the bundled resolution for both the seeker and the single state site plan approval. And uh, someone wants to make that motion. Make that motion to approve 22 038 seeker type two action and the single stage site plan approval with. Lands, I'm assuming um, 10 conditions. We had the 10th one being that landscaping plan. I will second that. Okay. Further discussion? Uh, okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Is there an earmark? So you yes. did. I said okay, so we've got a 4 0. That's a super majority, and uh, the motion carries. Okay, thanks. All right, Thank you. All righty. Uh, just for edification, the uh, next application, CPN 22051 is from Marathon Engineering uh, for uh, the Shepherd and Burke property that we all are familiar with. Uh, this is plodding along to a ZBA hearing on the stream setback uh, next week. And then it'll be back to us on the following week, twenty second. So it'll be on our twenty second agenda to consider the site plan, assuming uh, that the applicant is successful in getting the stream setbacks. CPN twenty two oh sixty two Marathon Engineering. I represent Edgemere Development property at uh, yet to be assigned address for Parkside Drive. Uh, it's part of the uh, uptown area, form based code zoning. And we, I believe, are back to us tonight to consider some sort of, I guess at this point, an endorsement to move on to the plant, uh, town board <clears throat> so that they can take action to consider whether it should come back to us as a site plan. So, uh, <clears throat> Going through the procedures of the form based code. Uh, if you recall, board, that we looked at it as a sketch plan. We realized that uh, to follow the uh, protocol of the form based code, that uh, it did not meet the code in terms of the uh, transparency and all that. Uh, the two. Two, 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 two variances. Yes. Two so lines. we said yeah. we. You would have to go to the ZBA for adjudication before we could consider it further. And it did go to the ZBA, ZBA granted the variances. And so it's back, we're back into the flow yep. on, the, uh, on the procedures. And uh, the next step would be eventually go to the town board. Right, it's cute to go to the town board on the 21st of this month. Okay. And and then back here. Sure. Glad with SWDR. We'll see you again then. And I'll acknowledge mild confusion on our part about what the town board's doing next, only because they did vote and approve when we saw them last. So I don't know what they're doing next. We're happy to go back to them, of course. But right. So because of the variance need <laughs> and that fact that it was sketch, sketch at right. the time, it's really a formality of them endorsing the final site plan. 
on this plate first. Okay. And then and that's what the flow chart. That's our flow that's chart. That's, that's where we're going. Yeah, we were here yeah. last. We recognized that the town and zone were kind of scheduled backwards from what the flow chart wanted. And there was a very carefully worded non objection resolution, which we hope we appreciated. <laughs> Uh, so this is to dot all lines and cross all t's. Absolutely, okay. and to okay. get to follow get us back as, in the chart. as carefully as we <laughs> okay. know how yeah. to. So we're sort of anticipating a conversation with the town board that says, "This is what we talked about before." Planning mm -hmm. board has seen this. Assuming at the end of the night, planning board has seen this thumbs up so far, and then they're kind of just reauthorizing their approval or affirming their approval. Absolutely, perfect. Thank you. Yes. The only thing I will say that we had. Had a concern about it, really. I mean, was the park, yep. and I, I think uh, you folks said that you would you have research that shows that the point uh, eight or whatever spaces per unit is, is adequate, and uh, uh, you provide that to us. I don't think we've seen that. Yet. You did. It, you, you did. It was sent to you. It was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's not too much. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't see that. No. I saw Three of us all of you on an email. And it's really? on the board page. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's the uh, engineer yeah, says. Yeah, absolutely. You can borrow my copy yeah. as well. If you'd like to share, you can borrow my copy as well. So yes, they have they have done research uh, looking at close to ten other projects. I think um, getting a range of how many parking spaces exist on the site for all users mm -hmm. related to the number of apartments. And they determined that the, um, after they broke it down, the ratio of parking spots was actually much higher for senior affordable projects than it was for call it family affordable projects like this one. Um, I believe we were landing in the point four, if I'm remembering correctly, I just gave you my copy. Um, and so we're well above what they're finding is the used ratio. Um, and we very purposely said, well, we know this is what we need. We make it safe. We know we're not going to be one per. Let's find that sweet spot in the middle that feels comfortable above what we're seeing, mm -hmm. um, but not more than we need to pave. And then they went to the next step and went to the neighbors to call and said, look, if we're wrong, you seem to have room in your lot. Could we share? And the call came along and gave them a letter, said, sure, we're, we're happy to loan you indefinitely 10 spaces should you need them, which again is above and beyond what we feel we're going to need. So um, we feel very comfortable with the number of spaces we have on site and we have the buffer. With so these all site site spaces would be uh, constructed or they just be they currently land exist. banks? They, current well, they currently trolley exist station on, on the neighbor's spaces. property. Uh, the DePaul trolley station apartments next door has agreed for uh, this project to use 10 spaces on our property should it ever be needed. Again, we're not anticipating that need. What I, if I may, I would say before that November meeting with the planning board, I think it would be helpful to have an updated parking lot plan, let's call it, site plan that shows that, because the last plan that we saw didn't really have the appropriate handicapped parking spaces, or at least by, by code requirements. It, did. um, it didn't have the, the EV parking spaces that I thought you guys had identified. Um, I know you're going to have some loading and unloading. So I don't know if there's ability for a vehicle to come in and mow, like mowing the grass, those type of vehicles, they typically take up parking spaces. So I know that there's some way to identify where you intend those vehicles to be stored during the temporary hours that they'll be there. Um, and then what is your total number of parking spaces being provided? And then based on them, then we can do a comparison to the number sure. that's identified sure. in here. And then th that way we have a working number just to make sure we're or doing apples to apples. And I believe we did provide an updated site plan. Okay, maybe we I have these parking spots and we give them to them. Okay, right. Sean, which plan? Let me go apologize. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I feel comfortable that we've met the state code requirements for accessibility. There Perfect. are two okay. different. There is a requirement if you have one working space per apartment, and then there's another requirement if you don't. Right, right. And we right. don't. Okay. Um, so uh, we can, I can talk to Matt Thomas, who's on the, he's on the WebEx site as well, or on the Zoom, excuse me. Um, we can show where we have, for instance, two extended fire access sure. lanes that those could easily be used for the lawn company or whatever to park for an hour while they're there. Um, so yeah, we're, we're up to date with this letter with what our site plan currently is. And I know we do also have a, a comment letter from you guys that we're working through, yeah. none of which scared us. It was a, a, lot, of, a lot of check boxes, right? Oh, we didn't show this, let's make sure we're showing these. So a lot of little engineering comments we're catching up. Okay. 
No, I appreciate it. I didn't realize you had submitted revised plans. Sorry. Sure, yeah, absolutely. Yes, yeah. sir. And I don't, we have not addressed your comments on those plans. No, that's fair. I think the biggest one, at least from for the purpose of conversations with the board, was the yes. parking lot. And I think it would be easier to discuss seeing an updated plan, but being that right. that's already right. been provided, I think that would be helpful. Oh. Our, our files are lacking a lot of information. It does not have that track, uh, the, the parking analysis. No. You said it was amended site plan too? When was that submitted? We submitted all this at the same time to, to Sean. So it was around 31st of October? Yeah, so that, that was the day of the letter. The eighth one we have. Uh, yeah. Last thing we have is the MRB review, yeah. copy of the CBA the decision from back in October, our decision from back in September. Thank you. We're, uh, Messing, we're we're messing uh, dancing in the dark here. Um, well, we're going to need all that before the uh, site plan review on the uh, 22nd. So um, we can absolutely work with Sean and make sure well, it gets to you. If you've submitted it, then it's just a matter of getting it where we can see it. Hey guys, this is Matt Tomlinson as well from Marathon. Sorry, I'm not with you tonight. We as Dan mentioned, we're also working through the MRB comments. I anticipate by middle of next week. We'll have the response to his comments, plans that were revised with that, and anything that is not in your application of record, we'll make sure to submit extra copies of as well. Yeah, Matt, from for my purposes, a response letter I think is really what I, I think helps. Um, and then if there's anything additional plan wise that you guys think is important enough to submit, as long as the board gets it in advance of their meeting, that works. But from my perspective, a response letter and then this parking plan, I thought were too big for components. Mm -hmm. Yeah, coming in, obviously, we know we're working with you first time through the form based code, and it is um, lighter on you know absolute numerics. There are certain things you want to hit, and we knew where we couldn't hit them. We went to the zoning board to work through those, and we granted the variances yeah. that we needed. And other than that, it is it's conversational, like we're doing about parking. Does it feel right? Does the math work out? And so that's where we have the report of, of the research that. Um, Edgar did for that. So yeah, we're, we agree. We, you need to have that information in sure. your hands um, and we'll make sure that the counts on our plans are matching what's in the letter. Yeah, I'm trying to remember from that last meeting. I don't think what well, we talked about the, I know Mark was concerned about complete streets, mm -hmm. uh, but it, how much that applies here on an existing street uh, is something I guess. Yeah, it's, it's or, uh, I mean, we kind of have limited ability to impact that too much. We are completing the sidewalk that is coming from either property into ours so that we're completing the pedestrian activity to the wider community. Um, we're providing bike access for our residents, bike storage for our residents, uh, providing the loop circulation for vehicular circulation and for fire uh, fire emergency personnel circulation. Um, and, and really in sort of a not rural, not urban, kind of in between sort of site, I, I believe we're meeting the intent of that requirement. With our design, yeah, well, I think the this is Matt again. I had some conversations with Sean, and I, I'm not sure if she's in the room, but the uh, the complete streets is really for subdivision or projects that contemplate road improvements, and that that is not this project. It's kind of outside the scope, other than the pedestrian improvements that Dan uh, was mentioning. Now that's an important segment of form based code. I mean, that's something that is called out specifically in form based code. I also struggle, I understand that the ZBA has allowed for variances, but especially on our first project related to a code that we're all still learning to be offering variances, I do struggle with that. Which which of the two variances or both? Um, well, specifically the uh, the the fifty percent the fifty percent to twenty five reduction on uh, view through. That comes okay. in. Well, so, I think Dan, and I'm sure you argued this with the ZBA as to the reason, you know, it's, it's a structural. Thing. Yeah, I mean, um, the basic reality is in this in mid rise and multifamily construction, it's going to be built out of wood. That, that, is, that is what is economically viable for yeah. market rate, affordable, mid rise uh, multifamily construction. And that type of construction needs more wall than not in order to do its job vertically just gravity wise and in terms of resisting wind and earthquake loads. We don't have much earthquakes, but code tells us to react to it regardless. And you end up needing 
two, two high to one wide and no narrower chunks of wall to make that work when you get into these higher, taller buildings. And that just limits how many openings you can have. And the other side of that is the use as residential. Privacy is a big concern. And so what we have seen and what we've demonstrated to Shauna is that very typical transparencies in um, well-designed, uh, being respectful of their context of multi-family buildings is in the 20 to maybe 30% range. 50% transparent is not a residential transparency. And so, um, and we provided four different project examples in informally in talking yes. with Sean, she's professional to professional, not specific to this project, sort of demonstrating a range of reasonable quality designs um, that are all in the map transparency range. The 19% is our neighbor um, under an old code here, and up to, I think we got one up to about 30%. Um, stretching some things, honestly. And so the, my position as a professional is that the intent of the transparency requirements is one we agree with. The numbers assigned don't match the use or the construction type commensurate with the, with the use. So it's, I would humbly request you to see a lot of variances, various requests for that for buildings of this size and type and use, because that number isn't a, a viable number. Then have we designed our form base code specification incorrectly? Uh, absolutely. I think that that's, I mean, I think, and I don't want to say incorrectly, in that this is, it's not real world. I mean, it, it, you know, it sounded good. It probably was a, a you know, based on another community or maybe a more urban community, um, which we can't fulfill that. So I think it intended to be more like commercial. Absolutely. Commercial. So it, it may just be the fact that we, Separate. It's it separate you, the transparency for different types of uses. And you do have a like I believe a seventy percent requirement for commercial. So dropping down to fifty feels like a big drop. And and the reality is twenty feels like very solid. But again, if you look at it, and I I welcome you to share my examples with the board. I if absolutely. Like to, if you would like me to, I can I, send I'm open to around. doing that. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at the examples that are in that twenty to thirty percent range, they don't feel like. Bunkers, they don't feel solid and blocked away from the community. They feel like residential, multifamily, reasonably well designed projects. Um, trying to be humble because I've designed them. That's how I know what the examples are. That's how I know what the map is. But I put care into the work I do and uh, try to reflect the community around. And it, it's just real that that 50% number that feels so much smaller than commercial isn't actually small enough for how these are actually built and how people actually live. So I understand the concern of, hey, this is the first time through, we already have this crazy big variance. I, I just uh, submit that it's a, a number that needs to be tweaked in the code. Yeah, com commercial businesses are not looking for privacy. No, residential is, they are looking for privacy. So <laughs> two different types of uses and different applications so I can see. That and if you do your one to two story single family home, getting closer to 50% is a much easier situation structurally. And in certain cases, might be totally fine. A big wide open living room with a whole bunch of daylight and then you know, really tiny private bedrooms that are facing the backyard, you know. And I will say, is it form or the factory apartments? Forum Street? I know what you're doing. Oh, yeah. Go that ground floor. I, I would. No, you can see it right in. Right. Yeah. Right. There, you know, it's tall yeah. There's no. No, it's, sh it's shaded, but I'm sure at night it's. Oh. Absolutely not. Well, what is that percentage? Because that's, uh, I know that example well too. I wouldn't personally want to. Have live you been over there to Don Lash's property on Gore Street? That, that's got to be much this. higher. Than I bet it's got to be really much high. higher. Yeah. 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 First no floor or overall? Overall, the whole building? No, the first floor is sure. noticeable. I think yeah. the other floors are okay, but it's just all glass on the first floor. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Especially that southern building. Yes. Yeah. But right next to the coffee shop. Yeah. So it looks like it might be a little bit of a right at the edge of a commercial to a residential district. Yeah, it's, it, it's so uh, redevelopment. Yeah. I have a commercial that became residential. I, I have a project in another town in the middle of a, a commercial core in the middle of Schenectady. Um, and on that one, everything around us was commercial buildings with that wide open glass. And so we had ground floor apartments. We designed wide open glass with solid walls behind it because we needed to give the appearance <coughs> to match our context 
and then spend the extra money on that storefront glazing and then build solid walls behind them to give the privacy. <laughs> and that's actually what I would have expected the intent of the code to be, because we don't, by design, we don't care what happens inside the space within reason, right? right. So, that, so I would have expected that based on the amount of effort that went into form-based code. In this particular site, in this particular context, that commercial appearance doesn't match what's happening around. It is, it is surrounded by residential properties. Um, and there is a maximum opacity in this form-based code. So we could use the same trick here. In that other project, there was not a code guiding us. It was the right move for that context. Um, in this case, the right move for the context was to match the other mm -hmm. family, family buildings around us and then stretch it to get as close to the percentages that we could before asking for the variance. Okay, uh, is there anything else we have to do tonight? To move uh, it? Guys, this is Matt Tomlinson. Sean, I think you were out of the room, but there was a comment relative to complete streets. I just would like to have a little discussion on that. Uh, Sorry, to make sure that I'm we've, still not sure about that. <laughs> to make sure we've addressed the comment or the question. What was the question? Was it Mark? About adding bike lanes or other improvements to Parkside Drive itself, which we answered that by saying we're providing in board bike parking, pedestrian movement, and completing the pedestrian route with the sidewalk. Internally, but it sounded like maybe there was still another right. question. Yeah, and it's the project is not creating new roads. Right. And the intent, <clears throat> Parkside Drive is, is existing, and we're not asking developers to upgrade uh, to complete streets. New construction, absolutely. New construction of a new road. Yes. That is not true. We ask for variances for sidewalks and everything all the time. We ask for right away increases for things like sidewalks. Well, that is true in that, that they are putting sidewalks in. I understand that. But right. We stated that we want to move towards complete streets. And this is one of the areas that we have cited as wanting that. So, as uptown, as a result, we should then expect that we upgrade that area to that. That's what the expectation of the planning board is. So that would mean that we had access for bicycle and pedestrian traffic through the area. The only way that ever happens is if we start the process. And as my understanding is that uptown is one of those areas that we said we were going to do that. Yes. yes. After, the last, after the last meeting, I did look through the form-based code and did not see a reference to complete streets or adding improvements to existing roadways. Uh, and again, I'm just throwing that out there to keep the discussion going. We do have the complete streets plan, but I mean, that's a that's a, sh a paradigm shift, I would say, in that are we are going to start asking private well, developers the to reason pay for we need a highway management plan to right. determine what, what roads do we want to have complete streets and where don't we? Right. Uh, and I could see the town at some point, uh, and they maybe already said that Parkside Drive at some point is going to be uh, constructed to a complete street design. With, you know, like, but that would be but that's on a, the town. That's a town road, right? Yeah. Right. I could see if we were building a new road that's exactly. it's running like it's one of the other projects. It's running. Well, Pierce Brook, uh, and that where. Yeah, yeah, but I'm right. thinking within the yeah. base code area. Uh, that other project uh, that would have it's a Coast new road. Property. It would have to be to a cross section that meets the complete design standards. And but as far as existing roads, I think that's that's the difference. Well, uh, it could certainly qualify as a complete street at some point. Uh, but uh, how we get that done? Maybe there's a escrow that's a, contri a contribution from the developer that. If and when the town ever well, uh, goes easy. in for space at that point, wouldn't it? Because it's going to require additional space on top of the traditional sidewalk. So it'd be an easement for space, just like we've been doing on sidewalks. Yeah. Okay. I think that could be done, except well, there's the already buildings an easement there, there <laughs> and for our it, so that's not even a possibility. Right. Our sidewalk and our building is already behind uh, right. an easement from our and and if. If anyone looks at the existing Google view or Bing view is up to date, uh, Google Street is not. But the sidewalks on either side of us are already pushed back on the other side of the drainage swale from the existing street. 
And so we're connecting that. We would not be uh, limiting the width of the street because we're already on the far side of the drainage as well. And then between our building and the street is that RG easement, which is why we need the other variants because we couldn't get close enough because of the RG easement. So what's your cross section right now from face of curb to the building? Oops. Well, there's no distance. curb, right? Face of curb, okay. There is no curb, but <laughs> oh, okay. The, well, you'll be putting the, the curb. Uh, there, there's no curb on that street. Oh, right now. okay. It is an uncurbed street. <laughs> yeah, we are uh, we are 20 feet from the right of way, and the road is approximately 20 feet from the right of way. So we're about 40 feet from the edge of pavement. Okay, thank you, educator. And within that 40 feet, you're going to put a sidewalk. Correct. It's about 15 feet from the building. Does that sound about right, Matt? Mm -hmm. Correct. The sidewalk matches the existing ends of sidewalk, like Dan mentioned. I believe that's one foot inside the right of way. So that's about 15 to 20 feet. 20 feet from edge of pavement, roughly. Well, uh, we're going along with what you're saying. Maybe uh, what is outside the easement, the utility easement. Uh, Part of that could be dedicated, uh, reserved for uh, future highway purposes, which could include the implementation of a complete street at some point by the town in the future. And that's already all public right away. That's not ours. That's not ours to, to give or deny. Okay, so <laughs> that's the 20 feet. The 20 feet is there. Right. From then, the, then the easement at 20 feet. And the right. 20 foot utility easement goes right to the face of the building. Right. Right. We are. A foot or less from the utility. So essentially, from the property line, there's 20 feet before the pavement, one public right away, and then there's about 20 feet to our building, which is all the RG lines. So the proposed plan actually reserves an additional six feet in sidewalk easement. So you have 26 feet to the back side of sidewalk that's reserved to the town for potential future improvements. No, that's no, the other application. Your revised plan is up there. You've got the... You can look at the old one. Yeah. The original yeah. plan. For this purpose, it's the old one. And we have to see the G1. Oh, no. Uh, yes. Wait, this one? Yep. 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 Scroll down. Probably two more. Yep. One more. There you go. Yep. So you can see the pavement line. And I believe there's like the dirt between the pavement and the edge of dirt and the drainage swell. And the property line is just outside the sidewalk. And there's that 20 ish feet we we're talking about. Okay. And then all of this is the 15 to 20 foot wide tapers easement with our GE. And we are, excuse me, it's heavier than mine here. And we are hugging that as close as we possibly can. And so to your point, any bike lane would be out here, which is already in the public right away. Which is where yeah. we, we've kind of done what we can do. We, we don't we don't touch the road or and that is also why uh, the, the 20 foot is the back of the build to zone and maybe 75% within we can only get 50 odd percent yeah. within it because of the curve in the easement. That was the second so RGH. They're okay with the sidewalk being on their reason. Yes. I believe we have to have a nominal agreement that says that we repair it if they have to bust it up. But but frankly, part of our issue is that they put their lines right here. They put them as close to our side of the easement as we could possibly ask them to <laughs> when they built that back under the old code, old code when no one was thinking buildings would be up against the street like this. So we have the same situation at the rear of the property with a gas line easement and the town's sanitary easement over there. Surface improvements are allowed over the easements. Right. Yeah, in all cases, as long as it's not a built structure, surface improvements are you could just an agreement with utility. Yeah. It's, it's ours to repair if they have to break. It's like the, the property next to Tom Walls. Yeah. The reason it said fallow now. for so many years was because it. So we hatched up with easements. <laughs> That's what we discovered from the first plans we sent to you yeah. the very first time. And then we found another easement, found another easement in our yeah, site. Like, so I guess it's price. our job to come up with the best plan we can do to this challenging site. Mm -hmm. All righty. So um, just looked at the flow chart real quick. And I guess the only thing is we have to, uh, maybe we already have provided a recommendation to the town board. 
<coughs> to uh, uh, does the plan board determine the proposal complies with the minimum requirements of the FBC district? Um, originally, it was a no. So that's why I had to go to ZBA. Now they've got their relief. It's back to us. If we think it does, then the planning board makes a recommendation to the town. And the town board will take it up on the uh, 21st and then come back to us on the 27th. Correct. Okay. So again, do we have to take anything formal or is, is what we have standing adequate? Last time I sent them the minutes, I don't know if we get it. John, did you do a... This was just a, something in the minutes of consensus. Yeah, that, that's exactly what we found. Yeah, it was so. a consensus. Yeah, yeah. I so I would do the same thing this time. It was a statement of non-objection mm. <laughs> at that time because we were a sketch plan and we were out of order. And, well, I, I think we can just say the planning board feels now it's still going to go to the planning, our town board and uh, for its, uh, they, they really don't review it, I guess, and just sort of bless it and move it back to us. So, but the minutes reflect that, John, and the decision sheet, the sheet so reflect. Okay, anything else? Uh, anything you need from us? So uh, when we see you on the 22nd, would, 22nd. Be, a, would be a vote. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. And uh, hopefully we'll, uh, if you're going to comment on Lance's review, just a comment letter responding to each item would be better than submitting another revised plan. Of course, we're working on sure. that right now. And if, if updated plan is uh, an appropriate part of that response, we'll provide it. And if the letter is the best, and what we gave you uh, wow. end of the month. Well, probably coming out of the 22nd meeting, we'll have to do a plan revision, but it'll be based on the whatever conditions come out of uh, our discussion. Yeah. Okay. Understood. All right. Very good. Thank you. Thanks. Good to see you again. Absolutely. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. All righty. <coughs> Back to the agenda. <coughs> With no new public hearings and no new set plans, no new sketch plans. We have an extension request from uh, Marks Engineering uh, representing uh, the Metro's property out on Bristol Road, uh, requesting a uh, 90 day extension from the current 180 day expiration, which occurs tonight. Um, I think we're all familiar with Metro's. This, this is the project that went through a detailed review, got approval from the, from this uh, this group. Uh, so I can. Uh, uh, oh, go ahead, Brendan. You, you can talk. I can just update you where you were at. We've got Ontario County Sewer. They've approved everything. Uh, the DEC has approved the sewer extension. Department of Health has approved the water supply extension. Department of Health should issue a realty subdivision approval here. I'm gonna hope in two weeks, that's the last hurdle. Uh, we've got approvals on the conservation easement languages from both uh, the town attorney, Chris, and um, also the uh, client, my client's attorney. Um, some formalities, just getting signatures on the plans. It should not take 90 days to close up. Uh, the longest thing that's gonna probably hold us up is uh, Town board voting in the easements, which would be December 19th, hopefully. Okay. Uh, so uh, you're further along than you've ever been, right? There you go. That's a good way to put it. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're moving in the right direction. Well, that's great. Um, <laughs> did I see something, and I don't want to speak out of school, something about uh, uh, this, this, this property might be developed by Reedman? Uh, that's that's a possibility. Okay, which are the owner of the hammocks, right? Uh, they and the cottages. Okay, there's synergy there, I guess. Uh, okay, you uh, have any questions of Brennan as far as the reason for the extension? I think you feel comfortable with this will be the first and only extension required. Hopefully, do we have the right dates here? 
I'm seeing November 6th is the expiration, yet the agenda shows November 9th. It's the 9th. Okay. Yeah. The information I had had different. So that moves the, uh, so, the so. expiration three more days to the 7th of February. So I have a question, comment, full transparency. I, since we first granted this, I am now a resident of the hammock facing this property back. So I would refuse myself. Excuse me, refuse myself. And I do have one question. Um, and I'm, I guess I'm happy to know that Reedman is developing it now. Um, question I have is, is there going to be any type of a barrier? Are they leaving any of the hedgerow, any of the trees between the hammock property, I'm in building three specifically, but a lawn there um, to provide any kind of a buffer between the hammocks and this project. And I think I asked it at one point before I was even living there, is there gonna be any type of barrier? And I think they said, no, everything is gonna be clear cut. So is that something that could be explained further or do we not know, or what's the plan for that? Brennan, can you address it? Uh, yeah, um, I hope this doesn't impact the extension. Uh, but the uh, some of the vegetation along that line is on the hammocks property and not on the property being developed. Um, the eastern side of the street, will be the grass swell, the uh, slight berm. Um, there, there's no plantings proposed on that berm. Uh, we're relying on the vegetation that's on the hammocks property to uh, buffer that. Yeah, I think that's what we discussed as we went through the application or through the approval process. Because I think most of that vegetation, as you said, is on the hammocks property. There's little of any yeah. one. Uh, the metro is probably yeah and, and i mean the uh this not typical to provide buffers between residential properties either i mean that maybe the hammock should have provided buffers to this property if that was the case maybe the readman's will yeah I'm so uh any further discussion on the extension Okay, did I get a motion? I think so. Okay, I need a motion to provide the uh, 90 day extension to February 7th, please. I will make that motion for that uh, 90 day extension on 22-026 for um, 5150 Bristol Road. Okay, I have a second? Second. Okay, motion is second uh, with a recusal. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 First, you have three votes. Okay, thanks, uh, Brian. Yeah, just Chuck, you probably probably aren't talking about the JT properties tonight. No, that's next meeting. Yeah, I just saw it on the agenda. I didn't know if you should stick around and talk about that or not. No, that's just our, our upcoming. Yeah, fair enough. Be on the 22nd. That's so we can prepare for you. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right, good night, guys. All right, Thank you. All right good night. The expiration is February 7th. Yes. Okay. Uh, let's get an approval of the minutes from last meeting, 25th. I'll make a motion to approve it. Another second. Job well done. Second. Okay. Got a motion to second. All in favor? Aye. 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 No money to be released. Uh, okay. We've got two referrals from town board, uh, one having to do with. Uh, Mr. Venezia's property, Avalon Brickyard, uh, requesting a rezoning from industrial MUO uh, to uh, amend the zoning map. And uh, I call on our town planner. Thank you, thing. Chairman. Cool. If you recall, we discussed this at length at the last meeting. Uh, let me back up. The original application which came in via the town board showed a small section of residential. 
while you were reviewing it as a referral from the sound board, you asked the applicant to provide a little bit more global vision as well as a narrative of justification of why um, a rezoning of 42, 40, approximately 44 acres uh, from industrial to residential or is warranted. Um, the applicant sent in a revised plan um, and a letter, I guess, of intent. And I am going to advise this board not to act on that actual conceptual plan because it is, there's multiple owners, not just the applicant here. Um, and if, if that is the case, if that's what Rocco wants to do, rezone that entire area, then we need to start over with a new application, Rocco, with all of the property owners shown and basically start again at town board. So that's my summary synopsis of where we're at. So he has he he's amended his application to not just include phases one and two, but include the whole 44 acres. No, can I can I can I butt in here? Can I butt in? Just that's up to the chairman. Uh, yeah, why don't you butt in? Okay, I'm going to butt in. I apologize. Good, good evening, folks. But I'm not, I haven't changed my request. My request is those 22 lots. Um, you asked me for something, a plan of what I might ultimately do. So that's what I did. I mean, I'm not asking for that now. In fact, I don't even own all that land now. I have development agreements on it. And to be honest with you, if I can get this done, I'll probably kind of stop for a while. So it could be my son 15, 20 years from now, you know, pursuing this. So absolutely my idea has not changed. The only thing that changed was you asked me to do something, I did it, and now all of a sudden we're we're rolling with this 400 lot subdivision, which which is absolutely not happening at this point. So I, I'm kind of perplexed about that. So your application is not any different than what you had proposed to us uh, originally fair. and to the board. Uh, true, we did ask in, 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 in considering the, the, the two sections you had shown, we had asked for a, sort of a conceptual idea of what you intend to do for the entire property, which is something that I think we had, the, the plan board had asked for back in 2020 when we looked at this the last time, but you did come back with a, a conceptual drawing of uh, if, if you were successful in getting the rezoning for phases one and two, that uh, there's a possibility that this is the way the, the balance yes. of the property would look. It was my understanding that's what you wanted, but it wasn't my understanding or wasn't my desire to move forward with all that at this point. Okay. So on the table uh, before the uh, town board and before this board is just phases one and two to have that change from industrial to MUO, right? That's correct. Uh, is that that's different than how you interpret it or? Well, my question, I have many, but one important one is how do you recommend a rezoning for a portion of one parcel? Procedurally, how do we do that? Is that even, I mean, that's, you can't do that. You rezone the whole parcel. You rezone the whole part, or the parcel, parcel, or, or that, you subdivide. Or the portion would be subdivided off. Right. That's what I mean. I mean that. Okay. Well, that should have been brought up, I guess, originally before the town board considered it. That it was, it was a, a rezoning of a parcel of a partial. So I guess, you know, it's a shame it's gotten to this point. Uh, well, I think also with that. You know, and that's where you're at is the justification. I think that's how do you, how does this yeah. board analyze without one, the conceptual plan for the grand scheme, but also without uh, an analysis of, you know, why, why do we need it? 
So there's the issue of trying to rezone a partial, partial or partial. Mm -hmm. Right. right. <laughs> okay. And then there's the issue of is what he's proposing in terms of the use uh, something that would be uh, acceptable and in compliance with our comprehensive plan of town code, all that. Can we maybe work toward the use issue and talk about that? And then whether he can actually, if the town can actually change the zoning map uh, from an industrial to MUO for a parcel, parcel, that's something that can be addressed with. Right, and that's what I was going to say is that if you want to look at the more Planning issue, yeah, the planning, right now, the planning is, aspect. Well, maybe part of your recommendation, whatever the recommendation yeah, is, that's part of the we recommend that a subdivision occur in order to accommodate the rezoning or whatever. Right. That could be something the board also sees on, I guess. It's part, <coughs> part of that part when that time comes, but time wise, in terms of, the yeah, clock, we're under you need to mm -hmm. this board needs to make some sort of recommendation. Okay, was, is the board comfortable about with what talking the about question, the use right? uh, tonight and what he's proposing for just phases one and two, the five lots out on airport and the uh, 19 lots yeah. on the new street? I'm sort of big plan. Can we talk Michael's about that? Yeah. In the five yeah. Yep. I mean, are we ready to talk well, about it so that we can give the town board a recommendation as to? Uh, uh, how do you feel about it? Yep. 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 And then there's two phases, right? Should open both. Yeah, can you open the big one Thank you. Yep. This is his proposal, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what went to the town board. Yes, that one. Hey, uh, one thing I will say, Rocco, uh, the letter you submitted with the, on the uh, 26th of October was the exact same letter you submitted back originally for just, you know, for the original phases. So I, I don't feel you gave us that more, much more justification as to why you feel uh, this should be rezoned from industrial to uh, to, uh, to MUO, specifically residential. Uh, so I, was, I, I, I guess if you want more information, go read your um, report you paid all that money for. <laughs> you know. but I, and I think we mentioned at the last meeting that, um, yes, we, you know, develop all of those, you know, plans and codes and, you know, all those things that are used to support the decisions that we make here. But I think at the last meeting we had said, you know, we need you to present that to us. You, you to, you know, present well, those. Yeah, I mean, I mean respect, respectfully, it's single family homes. We can't sell the industrial. Nobody wants the industrial land. It's too chopped up. It doesn't work. And the reason the town board originally did all this work was to accommodate the single family homes in there so we're just following up on what you guys kind of said i mean i can write an elaborate letter if that's what you want and we could just go another month but i just assume not do that i just assume go back to the town board um i mean this this is not rocket science here i mean you know and, and i don't understand the problem with rezoning a part of a parcel i mean everything in the town is part of a parcel you know um so Forty plus acre parcel. We're looking at one piece of it here. We we want to look at the whole thing, but we want to. Um, we set this up. No, that that's why I made that plan. And if you want me to, if you want me to show a development of the whole forty four acres, I can do that. You know, um, not a problem. I thought that was what we asked for. Right. May, may I ask John sure. with the, the larger plan and maybe I'm just not following with um, 
the larger plan um, with the townhomes, the, the duplexes, the single families all kind of extended all the way out. So as I understand like this horseshoe of it all, right? Like that's the current, you know, 44 and change acres. What, and then, so what's, what here is represented that's not a part of what Rocco owns as his property? Oh, uh, these. Are you asking me something? I no, I'm asking Shauna. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, where Dukowski is up here. Um, that's Dukowski, right? and that's Jones and Dukowski. Also, yeah. yeah. Which I don't know how far down that comes, but so I would say what maybe a third, maybe a little less, is owned by other entities. Now, this is Farnsworth. Or yeah. is this yours? You that's don't know this piece. I, I own that where the blue houses are. That's Farnsworth. This is Farnsworth. This is Farnsworth. Billeteer. Billeteer. Yeah. Farnsworth is here. Yeah. I don't, so, so there's four portions four. of. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, this, this is sort of my read on it. Um, we as a board was, we were asked to uh, provide an advisory report back to the uh, town board within 60 days uh, regarding our thoughts as to uh, whether this rezoning uh, to allow for a layouts as shown in phases one and two by, by Rocco uh, would, would be in compliance with uh, most of the documents that the town uses in for planning purposes, including Obviously, the zoning map and the zoning map does allow it to be converted to an MUO. Uh, it's industrial, but it's, uh, it's got the MUO overlay. Uh, obviously, the latest revision of the comprehensive plan, if and how that addresses this particular area. Uh, the uptown, uptown study that was done back in 2019, and I think Rashona's analysis, she uh, uh, quoted that uh, frequently in terms of uh, what it had stated. Obviously, our form based code, which really doesn't apply to this property because the form based code uh, ends yeah. inside to the east of the, of the pink line I'm showing here. So uh, that's essentially what we were looking at in terms of how we would approach this property as to whether it would be changed. I had looked at some positives for the change. Um, and these were items that had been brought up previously in previous discussions on this lot. Uh, it would increase the connectivity of the street system. Uh, again, looking at the overall with no guarantees that anything beyond the gas line easement would ever be built in the future or built to this, this layout, but at least it, it's a concept. Uh, it generates a tax base quicker than the industrial property would. I just feel this, this, if it stays industrial, it's gonna lay fallow out there for years. Um, we can make it into something and develop it and create a tax base. And I think here the developer has come to us with an opportunity to do that. He's even presented us with a, a builder, Mr. Henkel, who's uh, willing and able to, uh, to move ahead with it. Um, the only NRI impacts that I can see from this is maybe some silver maple ash. And that, is that one phases one or well, two? No, no, it's not on phase one or two. It's okay. over on the west side. Yeah, but it was, okay. I'm looking, I'm looking at everything now. I, we're showing I, it. We're, listen, we're showing that as part of conserved land. So okay. it should be a not, it, it should, it's within our conservation lands. Okay. Look. I'm on a roll here. Hang on. Uh, walking uh, provide for walking to the uptown area. Uh, Not a problem. We, we can we we can do that. Uh, we'd have a sidewalk system to get us to and from yeah. you know, down Airport Road to 332. Uh, also provide possible lighting. Uh, there could be a public transit stop at the intersection of Airport and the and the new street. 
and it does have a certain percentage of open space. It's maybe not 40%, but uh, there's no requirement in the MEO, if I'm correct, as far as actual percentage. I thought it was 30%. I oh, was it there? Yeah. <clears throat> I was just trying yeah. Okay, well, then it would have to comply with the standalone. We're, 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 all, we're, we're about 35% right now. In phase one and phase two? Yeah, we got that big area to the northeast, so. Okay. Oh, that's close. That's so to the north of yes. That's not a Yeah, I would imagine that the hard part about this is we get, we have to look at the whole picture, but at the same time, only look at phase one because I don't know if the, the rest of it will ever get the, you know, my understanding is we don't know when that will occur. So I think some of the MDO criteria has to be looked at just in phase one and phase two because that's all yes. currently is being requested to be resolved. Yes. So whatever the criteria is for MUO, has to be met in phase one and in phase two. A minimum of 40% open space. Okay, looking at the negatives of doing the rezoning, uh, obviously as has been pointed out, it would be a loss of industrial land. Uh, we do have a very limited amount of industrial land in town. Uh, is it, is it uh, you know, the balancing act that we give up industrial for the future for residential in the present? Uh, you know, that, that's something we have to consider. Uh, the proximity to the airport, we, we talked about uh, the noise. I know Bob Mincer, you've talked to Bob Mincer, right, to in, uh, Rocco, and regarding. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Mincer. and our whole plan is to keep everything away from the airport. So, okay, but still, it's, it's an issue. It's something that has to be brought up. Proximity to the school garage, certainly have to make sure there's enough buffering uh, for that. Excuse me. Uh, Pactivas across the street, so you, you do have industrial uses in the area, uh, and that results in noise, possible noise. There's a lot of tractor trailer movement on Airport Road. Uh, again, that's the nature of, of the area we're in, but that's just something that you know, you're, you're sort of uh, blending uh, residential with uh, some uh, semi-industrial semi use. So, those are the factors I looked at, looking at the positives versus the negatives. And uh, I, I think, you know, the residential would be a way to go on this thing. I, I, I would certainly recommend to the board that we consider that type of use, uh, given the factors involved. I realize we're giving up the, uh, the industrial, but I don't think, I can't see that could ever be in, in developed as industrial. And I think, this would be a transition between the uptown area and the non-residential school, you know, school garage and areas to the to the west. Um, so just to be clear, we're we're talking from here down, right? No, you're talking from the easement down. From here that down angle. Here. Yep. So when you talk about who's an industrial, we're only talking about this space. Yeah. Um, yeah, but then you get to the upper part again. I don't want to get into the other 44 acres. That's an residential topic. It's not industrial. Yeah, it's, it's not, not industrial. Oh, yes. No, it's not, not along the, yeah. so, the road. So, so Chuck, just to address, address a couple of things. When you speak of adding a tax base, mm -hmm. for every every dollar spent, every dollar gained in tax base for residential, it costs a dollar sixteen in school in, services. In cost to service that residential property. So from a tax base perspective, there is no gain to it. Around the airport right now, there's a concerted effort to try to continue to develop that, to have that more of a, a central area for airport services and use to that. So they want to expand that. That'll end up conflicting with, conflicting with this. When you look at the industrial purposes, for that same, it costs 30 cents for every dollar compared to the dollar 16 for residential. Mm -hmm. So for overall benefit, that becomes a ne negative to have a single family residential. Is that assuming, is that 30 cents assuming that the utilities are available? It um, says median costs provide public services for each dollar of revenue raised. So I'm assuming that's all public services that go to that. So I, I do think, it, in my opinion on a rezoning is that it should be a benefit to the comprehensive plan. 
and, and I don't think that we understand that yet here. I don't see the benefit to the comprehensive plan. Well, the comp plan was kind of new on this area. But it, for the comp plans for the town. Yeah, I, I know, yeah. And we're talking about a rezoning. So if we're going to think through a rezoning. So for the town, you're thinking that it's better to be left industrial, possibly not developed, than have it developed as, as a moderate residential development. Or if it's going to be rezoned to allow it, then I think that it should benefit the comprehensive plan. So if we need affordable housing, something that we struggle to also identify, mm -hmm. great source for that. If we need high density housing, great source for that. If, I mean, if we need something commercial that fits within the comprehensive plan, then it's a great source for that. That's not, that's not the view the town fathers have, though. Their view was to make it residential. That's why they created the MUO. But the town fathers. They the spent a hundred. No, I'm like, town, like, I'm rocking the town, saying that the town. I don't mean town I mean the, I, listen. I mean the town board, respectively, not town fathers. But yeah. just, just, just so you know, I bought this land based on the fact that you did put an MUO in there. To go back to industrial now, and not even give me a shot at that at the residential, uh, seems a little short short sighted. Um, and, and the fact that I know the gentleman on the left there says that there's all this industrial stuff at the airport. Come on. They ain't doing nothing at the airport. They're just kind of sitting there. They can't even build a hangar. They can't put the sewer in there. They can't do anything. And all they're doing is handcuffing me uh, by letting me wait for 100 years. My great great grandchildren could maybe put in a uh, a second bus garage or some, some something like that. Um, this doesn't make sense to me, but that you know whatever. The reality is there's no movement at all. It's for sale right now as industrial, and we don't have any takers. Again, I I had a tough time trying to determine what the comp plan intended. For this particular area, usually it's not clear. It's not clear. Comp plan, usually, the comp plans plan have a future land use plan. Now we do have the uptown study. The uptown study is very clear. Yeah, it's very clear. Well, it's clear in that it it shows a, 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 a speck of residential on that north west side. Mm -hmm. That's the plan that I was, you know. Was most solidified. But the uptown study was mostly related to transportation, moving people. I, I, I didn't sense it, you know, land use. Document. It was focused on density projects that required higher density. That is a key piece of the uptown plan. The comp plan is, the only thing that the comp plan, I think, really says is that we, it chronicles the loss. Of industrial land, mm -hmm. I did not see any. You know, maybe Doug knows something I don't, but any recommendations um, specific to this area? I mean, there's some global action items, but mm -hmm. it's, it was hard to glean anything from it. Again, I, I guess I just looked at it as with the foreign based code to the east, industrial and the non residential <laughs> to the west. This would be a transition. So if we discuss, recommend to not allow it, that land could possibly sit vacant, continue to sit vacant, and nothing would be done on it because there's no industrial interest at this point, according to Rockwell and what we also know is important. Well, it's 25 years on the market, so there you go. Yes, and then and then and then Doug Doug Finch got a couple hits, but it but it's woefully woefully horribly, um, um, uh, unable to unable to support utilities. There's not enough electric. There's not enough water, and you're never going to put the kind of facilities in here for 44 acres 
to you're not going to spend $25 million to support 44 acres for industrial development. It ain't going to happen. So, so, so it's kind of a catch 22. You, if you deny this, you leave me stuck with a piece of land that I bought that the town indicated that I could go residential with an MUO. They passed the MUO. I bought it. And then, and then, okay, we gave it a chance. Doug wanted me to try to do industrial. I did. We, we brought in a couple of big hitters and, and they said, no, it's not gonna work. We can't get the electricity, we can't get the water. We, we can't get any of the services that we need. So, so having said that, I'm just kind of stuck with this thing. You know, it's, it's gonna be glorified hunting land is what it's gonna be. Rocco, you should have said that. Rocco, you should have said all that in a justification for. Well, no, I can, but I, you know, I don't. Well. I don't understand we're down why. We're the 11th hour. Rocco, we're at the 11th hour here. So, you know, you're, you're, you're throwing stuff at us, and we certainly understand what you're saying. But if, uh, to, to have to sit here and, you know, take all this in at this point in the discussion, it's, uh, it's making it tough on us. Uh, and we, but we, see, we hear what you're saying. Uh, it's part of my consideration uh, as to why I'm leaning the way I'm leaning. I guess. We provide an advisory board. If we say we don't recommend it be changed, the town board has the old and say, right? Right. And they're the ones that do the rezoning. Right. They, right. they can take our report and say, well, I don't agree. Uh, Rocco has a good argument. Uh, it'll never be developed uh, industrial. Um, let's, you know, one the hands with two in the bush. Um, so let's go ahead with what we have. Um, Does the advisory report have to? Be positive or negative? I mean, can it? And historically, have you have you asked for more? That the town board asked for more information. I mean, that's what I'm wondering. Well, we could say that. Uh, it, you say it's incomplete. You, you don't, don't have, have enough right? justification to uh, to render a report. I mean, I agree with your positives and your negatives. The board, the town board, should see those as well. You know, Probably this is what we see is that the planning board has these are the positives, these are the negatives. Maybe we ended up with the town board. <laughs> that we, uh, we don't provide, well, our we advisory report is an analysis. Right, right, yeah. right. Right, right, right. 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 Declaration, right. we're just saying these are what, we, and I agree with yeah. your positives and your negatives, mm -hmm. and let the town board ask for more from Rocco or let them make Right. It is tough. You don't want to see it set up. If, if we were encouraging development and the land is sitting there, let them do it. But let the town board say, okay, this is what we need, or we agree, and we need to go ahead and right. make a decision. All you're doing is kicking the can down the road. You're not making a decision. You know, I mean, I, I just assume you make a decision one way or another. And if you, if you deny it, I'll take it up with the town board. We, we don't have the power of denial or approval. We just provide a recommendation to the uh, town board. It's all only the town board's decision, Rocco. Okay. We're just trying to give them uh, our thoughts as a, as a planning, planning people who are involved with this thing uh, month in and month out. So what do you do? What do you do? Give them a letter saying what each one of you are thinking, or what do you what do you do? No, it would be a consensus of the planning board as to how we feel about your application, and it'd be up to them to review that. Uh, I don't know. Did it go to the county planning board for their review for the rezoning? Or not? Anybody not else yet. who might have input back to the town board? Yeah, the town board can send it out. I'm just so confused by the fact that you spent, as a town, we spent all this money to develop this residential layout. In fact, inside the Uptown Story, there's new numbers of layouts that are similar to what I did. That's where I got them from. So, Rocco. yeah. Uh, Rocco, I'm just trying to make sure that all that money we spent is applied in the in the proper manner on this particular property. Oh so my, oh so my! I'm just doing what they said to do. And, and because it's MUO, there's no guarantees with an MUO. 
it's an overlay. It's you, it, you know, whether you bought it because it had the MEO or for whatever reason, there's no guarantees that the MEO would ever be applied to the property. Then, then what was the point of the study, and what's the point of what's the point of making an MEO if it wasn't going to happen? Well, it's, an MEO is basically a only, and that's it's rezoning. It's it's kind of like it's zoning in a sense. Yeah. yeah. In other words, you bring you bring to us what you have in mind for the property, and and if it if, if it meets uh, with what the town's looking for in terms of the development of that site, yeah, you know, we'll let you go ahead with it. If it doesn't. I think that's the key. I think the, the goal was to provide the flexibility to get some creative ideas before you provide more uses, but not necessarily guarantee that whatever project comes in is a, is a guarantee. The underlying zoning is. I'm the, not talking specifically rivals, I'm just saying in general. Yep. Well, in this case, the applicant has stated that he feels that he developed as a residential property. It's not going to be a you know, a commercial property. It's not going to be you know, the residential is what he'd like to see applied there. And we have to consider it. You made an application, we'll consider it. And we'll make a recommendation to the, the town board, but it's up ultimately to the town board, Rocco, to say, no, yeah. I, listen, listen, you don't have to explain that to me. I do understand that from day one. Well, I think we're sort of zero in and maybe we just give them our thoughts. I, 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 I'm, I'm, just I'm just frustrated because because from a land use, this this block that we're in, mo most of it's already residential up on the northern end. So to mix industrial with all that residential, that's not a good move. Um, and it's all under MUO. So um, that that's, you know, whatever. I, I've, I've said enough already. Yeah, I think we said enough too, just about. Um, how do you want, how do you want to go board? So do we want to kind of send those, those pros and cons and, um, you know, expand upon um, maybe the, the parcel, the parcel component of it that, that we've been talking about? Because I don't know if that's, Really documented anywhere in um, in like other plans or letters or you know whatever where the does your file analysis go to the town board the analysis you did um, I was going to suggest some of that as well sure yes I think uh, they're I looking agree. for input from staff yes from us um, Mark any concerns you have uh, if we're if we're giving them sort of a synopsis of our discussion uh, or we could take it from john's minutes and we could put something together uh you know i could i could probably formulate something and send it uh out to the board for their blessing mm -hmm. when's the uh the deadline is tomorrow <laughs> midnight yeah but they won't probably wait till the 21st right Right, but all Once of the peripheral materials are due tomorrow because Friday is a holiday. Technically, mm -hmm. if things come in on Monday, that's not the end of the world. So, I mean, I have a placeholder in there and the agenda already waiting for something. Um, I can send my comments and um, I can talk to Jean about just holding off if you all want the weekend to craft something if you want me to craft something well, and then to, send to it the out. weekend I I could I could probably you know, condense take everything anybody sends me in. Uh, is that allowed? Yes yeah, so and then share just don't respond. Do not respond to anyone. Okay. And then the individual that they can send you yeah. they send it to okay. you and you send I would send it to Sean just yeah to send it to part. me I will okay. get it to you yeah. and uh to compile. So the and then the pros and cons that Chuck read earlier. I didn't bring up. Is there anything that you feel would okay. so? Is there anything additional that you think the town board should see to help with the decision that is missing? That could be one way to provide a recommendation, right? We think this information should be provided. I'm not trying to. Right. Yeah. I'm just saying that those yeah. are options. I certainly want to get Mark's concerns in this. Uh, so either. 
Mark, we can take it off the minutes, or we can, if you want to send something separately to Shauna to have yeah, her. I'm fine with taking it off the minutes, and I can do both. I mean, it clearly states in the code that we're supposed to submit an advisory report. It doesn't require a decision. Right. right. And your concerns with the comprehensive plan? Well, we're looking at doing a rezoning. So my concerns with it are that if we're going to do a rezoning, there should be a purpose for the rezoning that comes to the benefit of the town, right? That's my understanding of the yeah. intent to rezone. We know that residential, single family residential place is a burden on the fiscal responsibility of the town. So, and it doesn't meet the five objectives that we can into the state that we're going to protect from a planning board perspective. So, and that's oh. temporal. So that's a temporal scenario that that's, that's what we're expected to do today. <clears throat> okay. So one, one issue in the town of Candida right now is there's three building lots available. And there's a lot of land in the town of Candida that can't be developed because there's no sewer available. And county sewer won't put sewer out there. So if you're looking for, you know, for, for uses for this land, this land is good for residential. The utilities are available. They're, 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 they're proper for, for residential, not industrial. And we don't have any land for sale. I mean, there's builders in town that want to build it, can't find a lot. They're, they're gone. Fox Ridge is gone. All Morales is gone. Morales building a new subdivision, but they're duplexes. So, so, so for new home buyers, there's, there's, there's no choices right now. So this would open that up a little bit. Um, and I would think that would be a concern of the town that, that there are building lots available for prospective buyers. Marco, I'll say one more time, everything you're saying should have been in your application for justification for the rezone. Well, I, I, think it, I think it was. I mean, I, I think that- I see a letter of October 26 that is about three quarters of a page uh, and that's what you said your intent was. That was your application. So, okay, so, 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 mean, so, so we can can we can we put this off another two weeks so that I can? No, I mean, come on. It's not up to me. Uh, we have we we have an obligation to respond to the town board, and we're trying to formulate that response. And that's our obligation. But we haven't been sixty days yet, have we? Sixty days is in order to yes. Yeah, so. We're working backwards. 60 days will be, we need to get to the 21st of November's agenda for the town board. So a decision has, an advisory report of some sort has to be at least decided upon now by the planning board. So oh, I don't understand what's the, what's the difference if I put it in the letter or I say it to you like I just did. I don't understand that. You're absolutely welcome to go to the town board meeting. Well, I certainly will. Or submit additional written justification or reasoning for your request. That'll be after the fact, after we submit our advisory yeah, but, report. But Rocco, that might be, I told me to speak for you, Mr. Chairman, I apologize. Yeah. That might be beneficial for him to still, if, him being pursuing this would be to put something in writing back to the town board if you felt like that would be helpful. Yeah. It no, obviously doesn't weigh right. any part of this planning board. Right. Because no, we're working on what we have. have. But yeah. it might be beneficial for Rockland to do that for the town board's purview. And mentioning that you've tried to sell the property as industrial for whatever, 20 years. Whatever the reasons were that Rockland yeah. yeah. yep. I think sure. documenting your Rockland, yeah. I think, is the key. Putting it in paper so that it gets referenced by people. This date, presented yeah. by this person at this point in time, says this information and we agreed to it, I right. think it goes a long way. So if I was you, I, I think I would submit that information to the town board for their purview. Lance, just so I understand process to a certain extent, if this is converted to an MUO, then, then it would have to return for subdivision? Well, so, yeah, plan. I think well, if we're only talking about his first two phases, then that's the only thing that we would see as a subdivision Right, but before it was, you, but all the rest would be vacant yeah. land, not That's, to be disturbed, not to be touched, remain as is for next year, two years, 200 years. Okay. So I know it's 
I, I can understand Rocco's approach with not wanting to develop the whole thing now and not put all the money and the cost of going to doing that design work and engineering work. It is a struggle from, I think, the planning for side because we have to look at the whole picture. We try not to segment seeker in the environmental processes. We have to size water and sewer and roadways to make sure that it can accommodate future build out. And that's a fine line that we'll be monitoring through this if this does come back to us and try to figure that out. Rocker, you had a positive advisory report from the planning board back in 2020 and nothing happened. I mean, I guess- no, it, was, it wasn't my choice. I just, I, 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 I put it in front of you guys and then it just kind of died. Uh, we, we, we submitted a report and then went to town board and town it never, board. no, you pulled it off the agenda. Right? Oh, okay. You're right. You're right. I did. Yeah. So, so you gave me a positive, you gave me a positive report then and you won't now. I don't understand. What, what's wrong? What's wrong with that picture? Chance you take. Chance you take. New board. board different New days. Plan. New documents. We now we have a foreign based code. We have an uptown study. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Give me your uh, thoughts. Or give Sean a yes. she'll send them on to me. I'll put yes, them together. Them I'll to send me. it out to the board and we'll come up with something. All right. Yep. All right. I'll see you guys. All right. Thanks, Rocco. Hi, Rocco. Okay. In this pile, it's my agenda. <laughs> All right, we've got two other uh, requests from the uh, town board for uh, our, uh, our referrals, or our thoughts. Uh, one being the, let's take the incentive zoning. And Shauna, that's, you want to tell us what's happening? It's, it's essentially adding more districts. So essentially the change in the incentive zoning, which we do allow in certain districts, would be the change proposed changes to allow it in all districts zoning districts of the town mm -hmm. um, obviously and um, this is a uh, education on incentive zoning it is a perk for a developer but it's also beneficial to the town and that we are looking for something specific and we dictate what that will be from the developer whether it's you know money for a new park or I mean there's a, like myriad. Yeah, it has to be a community. Typically yeah. worded as a community benefit. Yes, it, right. it, it, maybe it's a new fire station. Maybe it's a new yeah. sidewalks, anything. sidewalks, sidewalks yeah. trails, yeah. paved yeah. trails, yeah. complete streets, bike paths. So. Right, right. So we we as a town dictate what we would like, and then the developer gets incentives. So previously it was restricted to just what a couple, I don't yeah, know, I think six four, districts. Four, four districts and yeah. now we're going up to Many. six, eight. Okay. Is there any real reason, I mean, other than trying to provide it more opportunity, was there anything else that was driving the need to expand this out to other residential? If we can even talk about it, I don't know. Right. Oh, I just said that's an excellent question. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Yes. Okay. Uh, does the board uh, concur that this is a good for the town and recommend it? Could I add recommendations? Sure. Absolutely. Could I? Um, give you my handwritten. That's sure. right. That's recommendation. I'll take that. And just for just to say out loud, it's for the affordable, affordable housing yes. pieces of it. It's so I wavered on, I did some Googling. I was like, do I just add two sentences or do I say, hey, let's do like a whole section on affordable housing? But I just said, all right, let's go low ball here. Two sentences, easy grabs. Um, uh, in the first page, I, uh, in the section authority, the authority may be used by the town board, town board to assist in implementing the following planning objectives. I add to provide, and however you want to word it, affordable housing development options would not, that would not otherwise be 
possible or feasible, something of that nature. Mm -hmm. I give you free range on updating. How to word it. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. And then in the second page under F, community benefits. So like what's in it for us? I add housing for persons of low or moderate income, you know, affordable housing, quote unquote, as an unmet need. And those are my two recommendations to start <clears throat> inserting the Which affordable housing home. pieces of all of it in. Um, on the last page, I just like, did a quick little framework if we want to do it its own section, but let's just start here and then go from there. And if it's rejected, if these are rejected, then I'll do the whole section. But I'll send you, <laughs> I'll send okay. you that. Um, and free range should, however you would like to modify the text there, but I think you understand my intent. Mm -hmm. This is the board. Do you uh, this board board understand that? And it's okay, mm -hmm. uh, I agree. Okay. Thanks for bringing that attention. I certainly uh, feel that should be put as part of our recommendation. Anything else you want to add? Uh, and you're right, at some point, I think we need a tutorial on the sentence. And I think we talked about that at some point. Maybe if we ever get a meeting where we have a later we agenda, you can go over that. Because it's been rarely used, and but it's hanging something. out there. And now we've got to apply to more districts. Yeah, that's that's why we do it that does it. every day. Yeah. Yeah. We have quite a bit. There's an opportunity to insert affordable housing as part of it. Sorry, Hampton Courts, you said? Uh, and Hathaway Corners, 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 Corners, Hathaway 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 Corners, you have to weigh whether or not that's a community benefit or a development benefit, but there was lighting and whiting of the streets. There was sidewalk improvements made. The oven trail runs behind this development. So there were several connections improvements made there. Um, there is a future road, you know, Farmington has adopted what they call as the MTOD maps, which is a major thoroughfare overlay district. There are parallel roads to offset traffic on 332. So they have all these predetermined locations where connections to 332 would run and parallel roads would go. Okay. So as part of this development, a major town roadway would be part of the development criteria extending from County 141 down to a future light beyond the limits of their property. So they they made improvements to accommodate that future build out. Um, there is some park land, oh, I should have said it, open space land and trail improvements on the site. Um, and then there were some offsite sanitary sewer improvements made. Again, arguments to be made as to whether or not that was done purposely for their development or was there other future benefits mm -hmm. out of that. At the time, there needed to be upgrades that's help that. And it can be more than just one thing. Yeah, so a lot of times the way it gets presented is yeah. an applicant would submit a request to the town. The town then would say, okay, what are you, and as part of that mm -hmm. request, it's this is what we could do otherwise. This is what we want to do, and to offset those improvements, we're doing the following things. Because mm -hmm. um, a lot of times it's clustering, right, to get mm -hmm. more density, therefore creating possibly more open space mm -hmm. areas or other improvements that can be made. And so they create a list. There's usually a cost to show mm -hmm. this is the value of that amenity that we're giving the town, and therefore that offsets some of the development. You know, this is our gain. This is your gain. They're kind of running the same. That usually then goes through the town board and gets referred back up to all the other boards um, for recommendation. A lot of times it comes back to staff behind the scenes as we work with the highway superintendents, the, the sewer departments, the county would probably have to weigh in because this is a community benefit. So there might be other areas where improvements can be made that offset some of that. Some have been made in the form of, hey, we need money to help with the study for the sewer project that we're doing right now that we're still in the process of working through, right. then there would be a donation for that. Right. Okay. I guess in Canandaigua, that uh, the Wigman property there. Villas was, was the last one that the I was aware of. And, and there that was, was a switchback, trail. right? It was a part of it, yeah. There's one of those things, yeah. The trail down to 
think was like right. I think there was like a million dollar improvements made or amenities provided or something of that magnitude. Okay, so um, we're comfortable with sending a recommendation uh, uh, moving the, the, the amendment with the added condition or comments from uh, Amanda. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. I don't think we got a motion. I'll make a motion. <laughs> I'll second. Okay. You got it. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. The other uh, referral has to do with uh, the scene of Bushed. That's just an oversight in the original yes. draft to, to make sure that uh, if the property underlying property was uh, greater than uh, one, one acre, acre, that uh, that lot size applied, not the one acre. Mm -hmm. I, I can't mm -hmm. So I, I think uh, I'll make a motion that we uh, endorse that. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, nothing else happening of the ZBA or training. Uh, can we confirm and put on record that everybody is? I am. Not, I still have an hour and a half. I will. You do. Oh, no, I do. No. Well, if you knew what, yeah. <laughs> so you knew everything with my office manager in the move. Yeah, that's yes. right. my. My father passed yeah. away last week, and my oh, mother fell and broke her elbow. Oh prior my gosh! To so she went to rehab. He died the day she came home. Oh, so, oh, so, I'm so sorry. Yes. but but things are. It was a blessing, honestly. But um, so my mine, mine will be done. Probably by the end of November. Uh, if not, there's that Saturday in December, the first Saturday. Four hours. Right. So and I will, I might gain some extra. Or just I, I know. Online. Yeah. No, I know it's 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 there, so. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's been, it's been crazy, but I, it's in the top of top of my day. So you've had an hour and a half and more of training of being a son, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's been it's been a good son. All righty. Uh, that's two weeks. We have uh, a couple applications. I'm not going to go through them now. We uh, have we roll over uh, so Shepard and Burke. Mm -hmm. And along with everything else that's listed. And the PRC next Monday, we yes. roll up some more, right? Huh? We huh. so uh December. yeah, the twenty second, and we have the one meeting in December and oh wow. Is that the third? And there's our first year mm -hmm. anniversary. Mm -hmm. And uh, second John's, yeah. John's, yeah. John's like position has been advertised. If you know that yes, anyone. if you know anyone, please. John's and the ZBA secretary. Well, we you just don't. We don't just don't let John. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> that is. He's yeah, told me he can't, can't leave us. <laughs> I did ask him that. He said he might be able to zoom in for us. Where are you going? Nowhere. Just living life. Just <laughs> <laughs> he's, just, he's just tired of us. <laughs> so we don't have to be here. All right. Okay. Uh, anything else for the good of the board? All right. Amanda. I'll make motion to adjourn at 8 12. All in favor? Aye. Thanks, guys.